answers maybe or two to three minute answers for each yeah 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 that's that's good that's good we can have more follow Namaste viewers welcome to Jaipur Dialogue USA and as I, as always i request you please like subscribe and support our channel and uh, you know give your feedback today we are going to talk about a very significant issue from the indian election point of view and that is tamil nadu politics and as we know now that mr anamalai has become a real phenomenon in tamil nadu he is contesting the election from coimbatore and apparently dmk is leaving no stone turned to make sure that he loses so it's a very interesting phenomenon i was very proud to hear his statement in which he told a newspaper reporter you can criticize me as much as you as you want but if you say nasty things about modi i will not let you go by that was a very strong statement and it's a very telling message that prime minister and mr anamalai get along so well and mr anamalai is not a small person you guys know about him he has been in the news media throughout a former ips officer a very bright guy has chosen the step to integrate if i may dare to use that word in tamil nadu into the national element as a national element not as a fringe tamil nadu politics alone so tamil nadu politics has been dominated by dmk ai dmk and totally anti north anti hindi and they lead the brigade so today to talk about that we have i have great pleasure in welcoming two people one is dr raj kumar ji dr raj kumar ji welcome to the show he is actually a physician and i'm told that he is in the guinness book of world records for performing something which i will request him to do in his own mention and then i have mr umesh agarwal imagine an agarwal who is born brought up in tamil nadu so it's a very and both of them are very active politically and they are very politically aware people umesh ji runs a newspaper called indian chronicle right in which you yeah. which you highlight your points of view about politics and what is happening in the country so let's shoot off Ume, uh, dr rajkumar please first tell the viewers what is that guinness book of world records that you hold <laughs> it's actually the world book of records and uh, first of all it's great to be on your show with uh, dijaji heard a lot about it and then umesh agarwal told me i was quite excited so here we go we am on the chairman of an artificial intelligence based company we created an app which is a contactless sensor it just shines a light from the camera of the iphone or the android onto your face bounces back after hitting the blood vessels and with that we read off your pulse your blood pressure your oxygen your hemoglobin your blood sugar average for the last 3 months everything so we did uh, testing for close to 12000 patients over 2 hours making that a world record for maximum number of master health checkups so that's it's the world book of records in which we got congratulations for that i mean not many people knew about it now tell me one more thing here uh, before i come to umesh ji because umesh ji has been a follower of mine and jaipur dialogue for a very long time and i have you know he has given me powerful feedbacks very good feedbacks so i respect that as well i will come to you later but rajkumar ji from a physician to a deep involvement in tamil politics your thoughts on anamalai and what's happening in tamil nadu as of now <clears throat> indeed last week i spent three full days morning to night doing almost like door to door at several of the slums in coimbatore <clears throat> i didn't want to be <clears throat> an armchair intellect kind of politician on the one hand we are we analyze with cephalos on the other hand i wanted to roll my sleeves up and get into the dirt and i did that for three days last week and i'm going back again Indeed, I take the early morning flight and doing that again tomorrow. So I'm giving you the ground zero feedback. <clears throat> Undoubtedly, there can be no gain saying that Mr. Namlai <clears throat> is a political phenomenon in Tamil Nadu. Essentially, to cut a long story short, he did what a lot of people thought about doing, 
but were either not armed well enough directly to do do so because we know that the existing Dravidian parties can be extremely vindictive to an extent that you cannot believe so vindictive. And secondly, apart from being armed with people, to have the backup of a solid government. Now, both because of provenance and because of his hard work, Mr. Annamla is in a place where he's got the backup of the entire center and he's got a good front end. And with that, he is simply doing what people have been wanting to do for 60 years, namely, he's billing a big cat. And this cat is called this Dravidian bubble. So the bubble here, people say he's Annamla a bubble. I'll say he's busy exposing the Dravidian politics itself is just a big bubble. And as you rightly said, it's built on two or three foundations. It's hate politics. It's built on hate whatever is Hindi, hate whatever is Hindu, hate whatever is out of state. Indeed, one of the reigning ministers in one of his talks leading up to the election said, he actually said this, if you ask me, it's quite seditious if you take Article 1 of the Constitution. Where India it says India is a union of states. He said, what is India? I, I don't know what India is. I don't care about India. For me, Tamil Nadu. And it gets a huge round of applause, people going berserk. That's the kind of jingoism and, you know, hate sloganeering that this politics has been built on. And this man called their bluff. This man belled the cat. This man hated them with what JFK said in 1962 or 63. The only way to counter myth is with repeated, with repeated exposures to facts and figures. And almost straight out of JFK's book, you have Anamalai. He doesn't speak like, you know, like the Tamil auditors speak with multiple alliterations and uh, phonic, <coughs> phonic symbolism, etc. Bang, bang, bang data. You say Modi didn't do. This is what Modi ji has done for us. Bang, 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 bang. You say you did all this. This is what you didn't do. Bang, 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 bang. And this, in a data-driven world, increasingly data-driven world, this has appealed to the youngsters. And it's appealed even to the to the little bit more plugged in listeners whom it doesn't appeal to and that's the major challenge in the upcoming elections it just doesn't curry any favor it doesn't fly with the minorities it's a fairly large group in south india it doesn't fly with some of the sections of the other sections as well like the with the scheduled caste for example his bite is very low because they have a representative party and that party has always been with the DMK. And this is the crux of the DMK policy. They have never, since 1967, ever stood alone. They have always engineered a very interesting coalition. The Muslim League has always been with them for 60 years. Schedule caste has always been with them for the last 30, 40 years. Oh, sure. If I say that, I become a caste-crazed lunatic. But I'm just stating a fact here, a fact that anyone can Google and check out. They've always been with these two groups, except I think one by-election in the last 60 years or something, some small fallout, <clears throat> you know, some infringement of personal space. Always with these two and always with the communists. Now, if you look at it, I follow, if you really look at what uh, Hengdewarji, Golwalkar ji, any of them wrote, they said what would threaten to destroy India is leftists, communists and minorities. And that's exactly the group of people who are the buddies and the bedmates of the DMK. And this is why there's a challenge. This is where we have a challenge. I mean, I want Umesh to speak as well. And in the next round, I'll tell you where I see the challenge from the majority itself and not from the minorities. Brilliant. Brilliant opening, uh, Rajkumarji. Your insights are very valuable. Umesh, uh, please uh, do tell us about India Chronicle and yourself and Taking the you know, cue from what Rajkumarji said, that they have chosen the constituencies of minorities, Dalits. This incidentally is also known as the unholy alliance of socialists, communists, and Islamists to break into the main fabric. That's called the unholy alliance, backed by people who have money bags. Now, recently we know that Stalin, the chief minister, made a remarkably bizarre statement that he wanted the destruction of Sanatan because Sanatan is all evil. 
your thoughts on that and if that is also impacting the current politics the way it is uh, definitely if you see the i think the hair of the uh, of the chief minister uden is in stalin he made a statement regarding the sanatan he mentioned some names a uh, name calling he has done right that has seriously impacted uh, i think majority of the people you see uh, apart from that tamil nadu is a very god fearing state you have majority of the temples in the state hmm. if you see the mother of the minister she is a devout hindu okay she goes to the temple and and i am told that she is a very pious and religious lady so what i believe that udenidhi has made this statement just for for a political name and fame but apart from that he is a practicing hindu because uh, seeing her mother durga stalin she is really a pious lady and apart from that i believe uh, after this guy anamalai has stepped into politics nadu politics there has been a sea change uh, the tamil uh, youth were looking for a leader to represent earlier we had two leaders uh, jayalalitha and karunanidhi both were the opposite poles so uh, tamil nadu used to swing like a pendulum between two two but after them there is a what do you say we do have a uh, we do have a david right now the highest leader today is stalin and after stalin there is no other leader who commands the respect of the masses so anamalai is actually filling the void he is actually filling the void and he is repeating the same things he is actually a combination of multiple things he has the administrative and bureaucracy experience he is a i he is an i alumni so he knows the laws very well he has a structured way of thinking he is very much right if he is cannot deliver he will definitely say i cannot do it he will not make a, a obnoxious statement so what i believe is this type of politics for long has not been done in tamil nadu so it is he is uh, he is a person of interest right now now this person of interest has become so gripping in the mind of not even the state but national and international media everybody is watching manamale and if you have seen that uh, uh, if you have seen the prime minister has invested his political capital into him because he has seen the potential the the person is very grounded like the prime minister he himself is very grounded he mixes with the karyakarta he he projects himself as the servant of the nation he really he will sit down with the karyakartas he is such a down to earth person he has no the uh, he he does not come with some sort of a dynasty or something he has said he was proven that he is a self made man he has already proven that he has a administrative and bureaucratic experience he is being loved in the town of udipi where he was the, the sub superintendent of police so right now he had the reputation now the politically the people have come across him they i have seen couple of his interviews he have done in iit the type of questions they have posted and other things he left everyone speechless so he is just not a revolution he is a phenomenon it is a tsunami and i definitely see that there will be a surge in the vote share of uh, of bjp and nda to be combined i think bjp is the bjp is uh, contesting around 16 seats in the state and certainly they will go up to from the three digit uh, to, to from the 3% vote share they will definitely go to 12% to 15% these are the very conservative projections it can be about that as well this is what i would like to say that's very so interesting just quickly sorry yeah. just quickly please, 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 something go ahead. i just want to add something amazing recently i went through an interview of uh, udayini stalin in which he has clearly said i'm a christian my wife's a christian and when i married her i converted into christianity so there's a lot of uh, subterfuge there religious subterfuge happening now for us it's vasudeva kudumbaka we were safe from but we will accept everyone but here it causes changes in political alignment so tell me more about that political alignment because the alignment in tamil nadu is anti anti hindi anti north then you have christian then you have muslims you have dalits and then you have stalin who was sanatan dead in tamil nadu how will this eventually impact because one of the important things to to bear in mind is as i always say i i begun to hold that that statement that while we have called mlechas mlechas who are anti hindu 
but there are hindus who have become malicious because they hate hindus themselves so the the, the stalin statement that sanatan must die in tamil nadu how is it impacting the hindu mindset in tamil nadu so rajkumar ji i want to hear no. your thoughts on that i am a surgeon i am a surgeon of phenomenon yeah i am a Go surgeon and essentially very intense and very passionate about what i do we take the knife to cut out bad tissues or to take out cancers or whatever <laughs> can you imagine uh vibhuti ji ji or umesh ji a situation where either in the us or here in india we made a public statement saying i am going to destroy the foundations of islam can you imagine the backlash that will happen humongous now i'm not talking about doing that in saudi arabia or indonesia which are islamic countries i'm talking about doing that in india where we are a so called majority the backlash is unimaginable so i ask you and i said this on television in, in several other channels i was say, i was told it was very controversial but i just i fought for sanatan and i said we are majority so called majority in india we are 80% to 82% in tamil nadu okay leave out if leave out the crypto so means 75 76% yet we don't have the temerity to defend the indic religions when i say indic religions i mean uh, hinduism i mean sikhism i mean jainism i mean buddhism they're all one they're all rolled into one especially we leave out buddhism a little bit because it's been um, appropriated if you ask me misappropriated by some of the groups in tamil nadu okay they they just go on to the ambedkar's mass conversion and they 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 take it and the first thing they also is you know buddha is our god buddha in all the 83 books that have been written based on what he said never even used the word god but then that's a different issue that shows the depths of ignorance we are not even able to say come out and say how dare you say you destroy my religion a lady like nupur sharma gets the overall public boot from the whole world for passing a comment two people who commented and said she was what she said was correct were beheaded in public and their heads left her and yet we we see i saw this big conference huge banner saying we're going to destroy sanatana i stopped and emailed tweeted then and uh, and insta and whatsapp and hung around there for some time and then organized uh, a few things and then he says i agree fully with the new until then they were saying control of sanatana now they said they've changed it to eradication and he can he compare it to to dengue to malaria yes, and yeah. to fever which we call yeah. kaichel in tamil so here we say dengue malaria kaichel is dmk so <laughs> <laughs> but anyway but now that is not good politics it's it's very dirty politics and i until whom i'm angry with because i don't know how much time we'll have in this interview i am really angry i am really angry with the people who call themselves hindus i believe that you are an indian not if you live in india but if india lives in you if every drop of blood says ye you know bharat maha bharat varsha bharat maha if you say that ye mere vatan then you are a hindu then you are a then you are an indian then you are an indian just because you reside in india doesn't necessarily make you an indian and unfortunately for us especially in tamil nadu and this is one of the challenges this has a direct impact on the elections why has it not gone i agree with umesh ji it's 3 to 15% we may jump oh yeah we can dump ourselves on the chest you know we grew 500% 3 to 15% in any other country or in any other state if this had happened it would have gone from 3 to 70% but it's not happening why it's because we are not able to get what i call parity of conscience because mainly because we have been kind of you know boondoggled boondoggled into this place where we believe that only if we say you know what i believe in all religions i can't understand why these guys wear saffron and bokra when you say that you in some way become a more elevated human being than umesh agarwa or vibhuti jha or js rajkumar you are the very quintessence of goodness in this world of humanity you will allow mass killing and mass rape in kashmir and anywhere else but you'll say you know i believe in this and in a party especially when you're holding some blue label and you're a pseudo communist it sits well and somehow this has gotten into the average mindset oh no no i don't see what is about there is another direct historical reason because south of the vindhyas we did not have that much of an attack from the moguls or from ghazni the ghaznizid uh, hordes or the ghurid hordes we didn't have those 
we had only incursions from the sultans of bijapur and golconda so I, i you know i delved a deep dive into this it said why wtf are our guys not responding and we understand it's because they haven't been impacted so generally all the tipu sultan cut a few thousand heads and converted 50 60000 people and we had all these say guys saying you know we are hindus and we want tipu sultan's um, stamp to be released i don't mind if you cut 70000 90000 uh, heads that's okay you know that's a different side but the impact is not so much and so they have rel- lived in relative peace for the last few generations together and suddenly they find this concept of saying look watch out because you never know when something will happen they're thinking it's just fear mongering and finally my final point about this is the dmk has and the admk the dravidian parties have beautifully cashed in on that beautifully you go back to the founder he is the person i have my issues with like hegrewar for rss we have evera for evera amson a man who could shamelessly be built a statue of ram and here what he did was he carried the ram's picture with slippers around that and thousands of people clapping and saying this is what i'll do he never did that for any other religion because we hindus especially in the in the sense of complacency that we are in are a very selfish lot i'm sorry to say this but in the south we are very selfish you go to the temple and you pray that your child passes the us assembly and goes to the us your son and your daughter gets married kalas over you have a flat you have a family gar gada gar gadi goda bas over You don't think beyond that. You don't think the same temple is being jeopardized. We do. We have a horrendous, one-sided, skewed Hindu religious act, and you don't think what is going to happen to this temple. If they bash the temple, you'll go to some other temple. I'm not you. I mean the average person, and then pray again for your sons, uh, your assembly, and your daughter's uh, G mat or your daughter's bridegroom. It's just the place changes. What about a sense of belonging? What about a sense of saying, "Ye meri mitti hai." you don't say that you don't feel that and unfortunately that's what they've capitalized on and you're not supposed to feel it you're not supposed to feel india you're not supposed to feel hindu you're not supposed to see hindi you're not supposed to say bharat and you will clap every time somebody says what is bharat i know only tamil nadu you go mad what is this oh, rubbish rs is you know only ambedkar you go mad so this kind of zeher you know zeher dala which they pachas sal they've been putting this in for 50 years and what you see now is that even in the face of somebody saying i'm going to rip your religion apart you know we are still not going to have 70% of the votes and we're not going to go i'm sorry to say this cuz i'm a bjp guy i've been canvassing for them we are not going to grow from 3 to 35 or 40 that's probably going to take us 15 20 years for all these armchair so called evolved beings from another planet for them to understand that their very identity and existence is at stake it's going to take that long this is the arrest my case angrily no i can i can see your uh, you know emotion and uh, involvement and your commitment and all three all the three things are emerging very cleanly from your speech and your thoughts and i wish there were many more like you as we are trying to change the narrative at jaipur dialogue not only in india but as well as the what i call the wokistanis in uh, in america the indians who have become woks here Uh, who don't see the the evil staring in their face umesh ji you are a an agarwal born and brought up your father has been there in tamil nadu for a long time tell us the history of we know there is a hindi hatred and a, and and uh, whether, whether the hindi hatred converted to hindu hatred i do not know but this is something which i want to know but i remember uh, an incident here in new york it was a it was summer months so in america people love the summer right it is very cold country they love summer so and i was telling in that forum you know before the conversation started that oh indian summer you know is something different and there was a tamilian guy he said tamil nadu uh, summer is worse so i said why tamil nadu is not in india that you are saying tamil nadu summer is worse this is several years ago okay and i wow. was astounded that he said that in the summer you're right yeah that in this happened with me so i'm not telling you a cooked up story i'm telling it happened with me in a forum in a business setup and the moment i said that he ran away my question here is to you that the way rajkumar ji was talking about the hindu apathy 
the Hindu non-involvement. What do you see as, a, as an author, writer and founder of India Chronicle that you do from your place? Where do you see that comes from? And what must happen? How many more anomalies need to happen that the vote share goes from 33% to 40%? What does it translate into a number of seats? And you know whether it will take 30 years, then I won't be here to see whether Tamil Nadu evolves or not. <laughs> but I want the future generations to know that Bharat meant something. Your thoughts on that? First of all, uh, Vibhuta Jayadi, uh, you have to understand uh, in Tamil Nadu, uh, people use uh, Sanatan bashing when their uh, political existence is at stake. If you remember, uh, Anamalaiji has been constantly releasing DMK files and people were actually the, uh, the Karyakartas, the DMK Karyakartas were shell-shocked when they were hearing the conversations which were happening, which were released time and again. And this actually made the DMK leadership to go on a back foot. So you have to appreciate the DMK. They are very good masters of political craftsmanship that they are able to change the narrative. They are able to change the discussion. And Udenidi did a very good, a very smart job. And if you see right now, Udenidi is much more popular uh, Tamil politician than even his father Stalin. Everybody remembers him. Okay, because of his Sanatan statement. And I believe that this statement was done uh, meticulously for him to be presented as a political heir apparent for the core vote bank of uh, DMK. Okay, apart from that, I am very much sure he is a practicing Sanatani himself at home. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and if you see uh, right now in Tamil Nadu, there is a captive vote bank for both. Uh, DMK and ADMK, something it was reduced to be around, the combined vote share is around 55 to 60 percent. But after yeah. the demise of uh, Jay Lalitha, the ADMK is now being divided into OPS, EPS and Dinkaran. Okay, so there is a fragmented vote, uh, vote share of all the three is the combined a ADMK. Right now, OPS and uh, Dinkaran are with the NDA right now. And the BJP vote share is uh, projected to rise as well. This election will uh, will establish, I believe, uh, the BJP as a principal opposition party in the state. That is a 45% uh, vote share, which is being occupied by fringe groups, something like Siemens Group, and uh, there are many other fringe groups. BJP is getting traction there as well. BJP is getting traction among the DMK supporters as well. And many of the erstwhile ADMK party men, they are not happy with the EPS as well because many of them uh, believe that EPS, ha EPS uh, DMK has collided with Stalin's DMK. And both the Dravidian parties are uh, actually uh, working in tandem to ensure that Anamalai does not come to power. The repeated attacks against Anamalai and Modi have brought them at the forefront. So. If you see the popular, uh, if anybody who has popularized Anamalai is the DMK only. If you see a, uh, if you see uh, even a, a few days back, I remember somebody called Anamalai a joker and another thing. Anamalai like, gave him in a very strongest terms that calling them as dynast. And even if you see in Tamil Nadu, uh, you cannot fight elections uh, if you if you do not if you do not belong to the dynastic uh, uh, parties. Anyway, all the three Chennai seats. Who are uh, the candidates, whomsoever are there, they are all political dynasts. But on the other side, somebody like Tamil Sai Sondarajan, she, is, uh, she has resigned as a governor of Telangana and come to contest from South Chennai. We know J. Salban in Central Chennai, he has been repeatedly working very hard at, on the ground. He was even seen during the Chennai floods in December 2023. And uh, uh, in Chennai North, I, there is another, I, do, I forgot the name of the candidate, but he is, a, he is also have done a remarkable work. So considering Paul all, Kanakaraj. Yeah, Paul Kanakaraj, yes. So what I believe is all these people have done, uh, BJP has not given tickets based on your political dynasty. They have given the, uh, the tickets on the work you have given. And my belief system is right now, I believe 15 to 18 percent vote share is possible for uh, the, uh, BJP right now with allies. 
I think it should cross around the NDA should cross around 24 to 25 percent. This is uh, this election has not been fought on local issues at all. If you see, the prime minister has tried to integrate the Tamil civilization and with the with the north. If you see, the, the Kashi Tamil Sangamam has been established. Establishing Sengol in parliament that is something very much different. The prime minister himself was there in Chennai, uh, was there in Tamil Nadu for two days before the Ram Janma Bhumi Pran Pratishta. The type of people were crying from all uh, from all over the place. If you if there is any uh, data which is being recorded by the UP government regarding which state people are visiting Ayodhya, they will be shocked to know that Tamil Nadu people from Tamil Nadu would have travelled there. So I believe there is a consciousness. He is actually ignited the consciousness of the of the sleeping population. In I think in United States there is a concept of silent majority. The something like that is going to happen here also. And a noted elected uh, elect, uh, election strategist Prashant Kishore himself has said that this results will shock. This Tamil Nadu results will shock the net. Uh, will shock the nation. It will be something like BJP's rise in Bengal. BJP in Bengal was around two seats in 2014, but in 2019 there were 18 seats. Something magic can happen in Tamil Nadu as well. And the and if you see, even Prime Minister is coming back on uh, April 15 to campaign again. So he has given his time here. Yes, I mean Prime Minister has been very vocal, and he has really, you know taken care to talk about Tamil literature, the Tamil language, and the Tamil history, he has established in the minds of North as well that, hey, that has to be respected and regarded. You just don't say, you know, Madrasi kind of a thing, uh, annotation. But I, I wanted to tell you, Rajkumarji, that you, you said earlier on that don't how much time we have. Yes, we have time. We will uh, do another 20 minutes. And this is not the end of the conversation, because this conversation, Absolutely. this narrative building must continue. Uh, and, and I would, uh, you know, probably bring you on to Jaipur Dialogue main show as well, so that a lot more people, they have 1.4 million subscribers, we are starting new here. So Brilliant. it's important that this your voice is known, both of you come on the national agenda to describe the Tamil politics and how vicious it has become anti-India. That's that's important to, to bring to the mind. But I wanted to go back onto the Sengal and Kasi Tamil Sangam thing, which Prime Minister did with so much pride and so much gaurav, to, to, to use the Hindi word. Pride is a you know English word, not doesn't translate into gaurav that we use in Hindi. Gaurav, yes. So I don't know what is it, Tamil? Tamil uh, gauravam. It's the same. Gauravam. Yeah. All right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> So, so establishing Tamil Gaurav from Sengol to Kasi Tamil Sangam. Tell us something about that, Rajkumarji, your take on that. So, I'm a complete anti nehru man. The more I read Indian history, the more I go against Nehru. So, on August 15th, 1947, even before the tryst, actually 14th, no, sorry, 15th afternoon, at the Prime Minister's residence, the Sengol was actually passed on. And as it was passed on, they had two or three thousand. Actually, it's all mentioned in Larry Collins, Dominic Lapierre's Freedom at Midnight. There are two or three thousand priests chanting the same South Indian Tamil mantras on Lord Shiva, on Mahadev, from the Tiruvasakam. Beautifully scripted uh, Tamil poetry. And some of these, the words of the, from the Tamil poetry, were inscribed on the Sengol. I know this because I spoke to the BBC, Vumudi Bangaru Chetty, who, the very person who made it, the last of those people is still alive. You know, his son is my classmate. He was saying they inscribed this. And then this was handed over. They actually sprinkled holy water from Tanjore. See the amount of South Indianness that's been there. And I'll tell you the, the anticlimax to the story. And then they put sacred ash from Chidambaram, which is the center of Shaivism, southern center. And then they also had some bilvam leaves. Bilva leaves are typical leaves of um, for used for worship of Lord Shiva. They put all this, put the ash, and they handed it over to him. And the, the anticlimax is this thing that was given with such pomp 
with such circumstance and with such depth, representing the exact parallel to what the South Indian rulers like the Cholas would have the scepter handed over to them in order to establish God's kind of um, God's domain and God's kind of uh, looking after their subjects. That was just taken straight and sent off to his home in one of his museums in Allahabad, which is written there, walking stick of Jawaharlal Nehru. This all, all these facts came to light later. It had to be bridged out from there. It's ridiculous because you you treat a civilization, an entire southern civilization with such disdain, and then you get away as the saver and the keeper, conscience keeper of multiple religions. So what Muriji did, Muriji turned this on the head, appended it, and then did the same thing with the same pomp and circumstance and brought all these people up to Delhi. And when he took over in parliament, he made sure that Sengol was given a lot of respect. It's a way of telling the South southern people, I care for your culture. I care for the way you do your Shaivite uh, prayers. I care for your poetry. I care for your principle of sceptorship. And that really, really, really gelled beautifully with the people. Indeed, I liked what Amish Ji was saying. There are two poles at work here. One pole is, I'm sorry to use this term, but the attack dog pole, where we have someone like a young, switched on database guy, like Anam, like firing them. You said this, but you didn't do this. You said you did this, you, you didn't do this. You cheated on this. This is my right to information. Bang, bang, bang. And then on the other hand, you have a very benign, avuncular, uncle-like, really, really father-like, loving person who says, I love your language. I released a book on the 25th of February at the Chennai Literary Festival, and the book is called Seven Word Mantras, based on the seven words that together make up each Tirukural. Each Tirukural is just seven words. Eternal, deep truths, profound you know, openings into consciousness. And these are the, the entire book is based on just ten Tirukurals, ten couplets. These ten couplets were the ten couplets used very effectively by Prime Minister Modi ji in the last seven years. It's for seven years that he's been using the Tirukurals. And each one was a gem chosen beautifully, very wisely, and hit home the very message that he wanted to. So I've actually done the whole book in English because Tamil people know the Tirukural. The English people must understand the profundity and the kind of ineffable um, you know, beauty of this, uh, of this uh, Tirukural. And he, by latching on to what the Tamil people hold dearest to their hearts, I know he just got into many, many of the hearts through the Tirukural. Yes, of course, we live in the Kalyug. And in the Atharva Veda, it says Kalyug is an age of scepticism, where even if there's a black dot on a white wall, the man will only see the black dot. And of course, people like hate mongers build on this scepticism, this miasma of scepticism that's everywhere. And they say, you know what? He's just, you know, currying your favor. He's just running after you. Look at the way he pronounces and they troll him and they trope him and all that stuff. But despite all that, he's gotten to us. He's gotten to the average Tamil guy whom I represent and say, okay, this man took the trouble of mastering this very diff these difficult set of couplets, used them very aptly. So the Sengol number one, the Tirukural number two is wearing a dhoti. It takes, it is not for the faintest of hearts to wear a dhoti and walk in the in the wind unless you have very, very strong ironclad underwear. But this gentleman <laughs> wore this, even all of us are scared to wear. He wore it repeatedly to make a statement. Okay, it's a sartorial statement, a classical Tamil statement, uh, a statement going back to history. Historical statement with the Sengol, sartorial statement with his dhoti, and says, I am as much Tamil as you are. If you go back to John F. Kennedy, probably the, his most famous words with Europe, where when he went to the Berlin Wall and he said, Ich bin ein Berliner. I am a Berliner too, like you. And the Germans went berserk. So this man, without actually saying, I am a Tamilian too, he, Modi ji, has got into most of our hearts by looking at Tamil customs. So, and he's never, except in the last couple of speeches, he's not gone for a frontal broadside attack. That assault is left to anomaly. So if you look at it top down, perhaps I'm attributing, I'm reading much more than there is, but to me, there's a humongous strategic, you know, casting at play here. One person winning hearts, 
and one person shooting down the enemy and showing them up for what they are. And this combination is working beautifully. And yes, I agree with Umesh Ji that we are going to have definitely double figures, perhaps 15, perhaps 18. If you add the other fringe uh, allied parties, we might even hit 2022. As to the number of seats, now that's a different ball game, different animal altogether. And anything between five and 10, I'd be happy with. You must remember that we've historically had always zero with the odd purple patch of one. Correct. From that to jump to a very well definable, very opposition position definable eight or 10 would be brilliant. But then, as you rightly said, only time will tell. That's right. Only time will tell. And as the saying goes, you know, uh, you know, matches are one. I, I'm I'm prone to bringing a sports analogy in my life because I consider sports as my biggest teacher. As the saying goes, you need one goal to score a win a football match. You need to win the championship by one run, one wicket, to use the cricket analogy. One dropped catch, one unfortunate run out can alter the game. So let's see how the game unfolds. Uh, he heading out to the election. But one thing which I want to ask Umesh Ji and I want both of you to say about it. Apart from the Dravid DMK, AI DMK in a total disarray after Jalil departure, how is the Congress Party, because Congress Party is the cause of many problems in the country, and I personally believe in that. How do you find these allies, I call them Mahachor Bandhan, no, I don't call them. I call them Mahachor Bandhan. No, Sharad, Pawar, Sharad Pawar was a former congressman. Dalu Yadav was a former congressman. These are all congressees of the past who, for power hungry scenarios, they split from the party, created their own little fiefdom, Zamindari. Now they are all come back together. I find them, they are Hindus in name only. They have never done anything for us. On the contrary, legislatively, administratively, they have systematically hurt the Hindus. And as you rightly said, Rajkumarji, earlier on, that we are somewhere along the line far too big a dhimmis. We don't respond. But you are right. Stalin made the startling statement to demolish and abuse the Sanatan practices altogether. But there was no revolt. I'm asking you a question, Sumeji, and I would like Rajkumarji to say, is freedom... Is freedom in democracy has become a fault line for all the evils to make use of. They are abusing the freedom as a fault line of democracy. Congress party, which is a completely anti-Hindu, anti-Sanatan party. How do they get the votes? Who votes for them, despite knowing all of it? Your thoughts? Uh, if you see in Tamil Nadu, it's around 6% of the population it's Muslim population. So predominantly it is 94%. Uh, of the 94%, I think 85% would be poor Hindus. And in spite of that, Congress gets a lot of traction among the uh, among the older generations. But as, as uh, Rajkumar Ji has said, uh, the new generation, they have started questioning. They have started uh, the, the data. And they are getting related with Anamali. And even if you see in the, in the heartland states, Congress gets around 40% of the vote. So what is happening is we are being consumed by the disease called secularism. We do not, uh, as uh, he has rightly stated, we do not protest. We do are not vocal about it. If somebody says anything, we are listening. It's a silent uh, sleeping majority. Now it is uh, this majority, silent sleeping majority is getting awakened by someone who is anomaly. This, this phenomenon is awakening the, uh, the silent sleeping majority. They have started protesting. We had seen uh, people protesting against the Supreme Court as well when they castigated Nupur Sharma. And we have in the past also some, uh, elect, uh, some decisions of the Supreme Court were even countered. Even if you see the Patanjali case, many, uh, many legal counsels have uh, stated the way the judge had uh, stated to Baba Ramdev that we will rip you apart. So media started speaking about it. But the thing is, it has to get vocal. People have to say. Many people are saying right now. The percentage is really very small. But I think uh, surely and surely as uh, things get traction,
many people will uh, uh, will start speaking i would like to say one thing in 2009 bjp in uttar pradesh got single digit seats nine seats but suddenly in 2014 they jumped to 73 there was something that happened okay suddenly the, the minority the, suddenly the sleeping majority awakened they could uh, when they feel threatened they definitely will come together and they will vote and block tamil nadu things have started coming up people are taking seriously it now and prime minister himself knows that tamil culture the tamil the tamil nadu has to be integrated with the national politics and uh, tamil nadu have, for the past one decade uh, for the past two decades have missed the growth bus if you see we do not have a international airport in chennai also even today which if you see uh, any other cities they have grown leaps and bounds so somewhere down the time even if you if even if any party in uh, tamil nadu for the past 10 years they have won 38 or 39 seats it doesn't matter but right now anamalai is being projected as a man that who can deliver the promises he is being dubbed as a connection between tamil nadu and center and as per the ground reports he is getting overwhelming sub, uh, support from cross across the people cross sections of the society the malayalam people in coimbatore they are supporting him the naidus are supporting him the uh, the gaunders are supporting him and he is a sure shot winner and if you see the prime minister himself has patted him so something is uh, so the prime minister has high hopes on uh, for him and certainly the party looks him some day to lead the country as well this is my okay rajkumar ji uh, one more thing i wanted to say before we close today's uh, conversation is anamalai has em- emerged i mean there is no denying that fact I mean, he has become the voice of the people and suddenly you are seeing an uprising happening awareness happening awakening happening you know how will the desperation of dmk i'm sure they are worried i think i'm sure they are worried because any chipping away of their votes or seats will permanently dent them and i i am i'm sure about that how do you see violence becoming a toolkit operation in tamil nadu i am suspecting violence will be used as a final toolkit operation all over the country as we see it in the media how do you see that play out there because muslims are very fine tuned to indulging in violence so first of all i agree completely with what umesh ji was saying about the strategy bang on I, and i think people have been waiting for that moment to happen and it's happened he's right and there's a nice link between modi ji and right going right to, to anamalai now about a year ago there was a bomb blast and i actually went to that place outside a temple called the koteshwara temple in kolkata you won't believe it's a clear bomb blast because there were nails it was supposed apparently the scar is supposed to go somewhere else and to get blasted but it took a bump just in front of the temple and it you know that bump ignited the bomb now there were just nails strewn right through across okay and that's classic of of how terrorists keep an ied with nails so they can go and cause damage at in the impact unfortunately the commissioner of police at that time and the dgp all of them said it was just an lpg blast completely incidental and hushed it up the case is still under this anomaly raised a human cry and now i think it's still under uh, cbi but you're right and that is in koteshwar temple area which is actually a muslim area although they have a penchant for violence if they actually involve themselves in direct violence it, there might be a huge vote swing so i don't think they'll do that uh, bibuti ji but what they will do is what umesh ji was saying there's an and what you were saying element of desperation i know from the ground at the ground zero kobai there are actually parties going around saying i'll give you x amount of rupees i'm saying there are parties because you have to read between the lines uh, i don't want to land up behind bars it's okay for you sitting out there in a the country it might be cold but it's safe uh, um the country saying there are there are parties saying we'll give you x amount of rupees you don't necessarily have to vote for me just don't vote for anam this is the first time that in the garb of just giving the people money people are actually doing anti canvassing for the other person 
rather than canvassing for themselves. But what I'm saying is, as Umesh Ji said, the Naidus and the Gounders and all these groups, it's a huge groundswell of support for him because the common man is coming out and saying, enough is enough. Let me get rid of dynastic politics. Let me get rid of politics where they just spew hate at each other. And so I think if that, if that tipping point, if you follow Gladwell, is reached, it's quite possible that there might be a polar swing. You know, this is known as flip-flop politics. It used to be all of DMK or all of ADMK. And then they would find the other person corrupt and go back to the first person. Mm -hmm. You know, believing in some uh, epiphanic kind of uh, projection that suddenly in the intervening years, the other person has reformed and become a good man. And once more, they would be cheated. And this flip-flop, the people getting frustrated and cheated every time, has been going on not just once or twice, but for 50 years. So I think the people are desperate for change and perhaps a call for change uh, will make that difference. I want to end by saying that when you talk about violence, there is violence in words, violence in approach, like somebody saying someone's a joker, someone saying, and I think um, when Mr. Namlai called the heir apparent, he said he's not even fit to get a watchman's job. He fought back by, by saying he's just literally, he's a uh, goat shit. Because, they, because he was a farmer, they call him a goat. So that kind of going down to that level, say, I'll see what I'll do to you kind of thing. This mudslinging at the ground level, the sort of thing that we used to see in B-grade 80s and 90s uh, Hindi movies when we were desperately trying to get snatches of uh, Hindi to understand the language. We're seeing that now on ground zero and that doesn't bode well for the party. It actually bodes very well for the BJP. Because at some point of time, things have to give. And then the people are going to say, let's go with the BJP. So I think that change is not very far off. But for the amount of bashing that the Hindu temples, that the Hindu religion, that the Hindu body polity have been getting, the kind of bashing they've been getting for the last 20, 30 years, I, sh I would have been happy for it to go from 3 to 75 or 70. I'm going to, can I finish up with one more statement? Please. Uh, Umeji was saying, Umeji was saying how the more they threatened, the more they'll come up. And I agree with that. If you look at the two areas where the Hindus came up to high numbers, they were in Ramnadapuram and in uh, Kanyakumari. In Ra Ramnadapuram is the maximum percentage of Islam. And in Kanyakumari, it's a maximum percentage of Christianity. There's a strange, peculiar, soporific stupor uh, you know, in, into which our people have fallen. It's an inertia, really. The physics word is an inertia. It takes time for them to move, to get up and move. But they only get up and move when the numbers on the other side of the fence seem to loom up into a threatening number. And then they say, oh my gosh, I better protect myself. Otherwise, they're just, you know, like the Maharajas of old, just sunk in that, uh, in that soporific squalor and that stupor. So I think the time is now coming when they're feeling challenged from the other side. And as, as uh, Umesh Ji said, simply calling out Anamle and attacking him is making people wake up and say, hey, wait a minute. All he said was for Hindus. How can you attack him? And that's actually working out in his favor. So it's a very interesting. We are absolutely on the crossroads, Vibhuti Tamil Nadu is the place to watch because this is a place where seismic, tectonic shifts are going to happen. Volcanic eruptions are going to happen on the political landscape. And there's no telling where it will go. And certainly the vote share of the BJP is going to increase substantially, although the seats are not going to increase that substantially. Perhaps the next round we'll, we'll discuss next time why we won't have such a big seat share. But Perfect. yes, overall, Perfect. it's going to be up for the BJP and down for the Dravidian parties. I would like to... <laughs> Thank I would you like so much for your So, Umesh Ji, you will have the I, last word. Yeah, uh, I would like to add one more point. Yes. In 2014, uh, Lok Sabha elections, you uh, must be aware, many Congress leaders have made disparaging remarks against the Prime Minister. One noted uh, uh, person, Manishankar Ayer, had even used a derogatory word. Yes. A, a Congress leader even had stated that he will chop Modi to pieces. And in spite of that, the same type of vicious attacks are happening. I'm seeing a similar vicious attacks are happening on Anamale. So certainly Tamil Nadu, uh, it, uh, there is a uh, sleeping silent majority. They do not like politics, which is vindictive, which is below the bed. This society respects, uh, even if you are a political foe, they have a respect for each other. It values that respect. And when that respect goes down, certainly they stand with the people 
uh, they stand with the person who has endured the most. You can see what happened to Jaya Lalitha. As soon as in, after in the 1989 assembly, what happened to her? She rose like anything. Something like this, uh, Anna Marilai is going to have the stature. So, certainly to Madam Jaya Lalitha as well. I believe that it, it, it will happen in future. That's the very promising. The, vision, the upper horizon of the vision of many of these parties, just right. to end with on a lighter note, the upper horizon of their vision is the belt. <laughs> They're not even able to see one millimeter above the belt. Their entire landscape, mindscape is only below the belt. There you go. <laughs> this has been a fascinating conversation because I've never had this kind of a conversation on Tamil Nadu politics as intensely as we did. And that's fascin fascinating to know for me particularly. And I think viewers will really appreciate the ground level information that you have shared. And that's what is important that you brought about the fact that the Dravid politics needs to change and there can be a tectonic shift happening this at uh, this time. And that is a very hopeful agenda. Let's see how the outcomes eventually show. Thank you very much for joining today, Rajkumarji. And I promise you that I'll come to you when I come to India next for your AI research on me to set right my if there's anything. <laughs> and Umeshji, please keep up your good work on your India Chronicle and deeply appreciate your coming here. As I always request the viewers, please like, subscribe and support our channel. And if the truth has to triumph, I always say, Satya Meva Jayate, for truth to triumph, you've got to stand up just as Rajkumarji and Umeshji have done, just as I'm doing, just as so many more are doing. Each one of us has to remember one thing very clear. This Ram Lalla Sthapana happening in, in, uh, in Ayodhya is not only Pran Pratishtha of Ram, Sri Ram, it is a Pran Pratishtha of Bharat. That's what you have to remember, that Ramji carried his weapons, his Dhanushwan always with him. We have to also adorn that. We have so also to adopt that so that nobody fires at you will have to think again. And that's where you will have an uprising and awakening. Thank you very much once again. Talk to you again very soon. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah.